the Brookfield Selectman's meeting of January 22nd, 2019. Would you please like to rise and join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to entertain a motion to approve an expense warrant and a payroll warrant. You, you have that motion? Second. Okay. Uh, approve an expense warrant from 114.19 for $24,600. Approve a payroll warrant for 116.19 for $170,057.06. And, and then I would like to another motion to approve the ZBA minutes from November 13th, 2018. Should we vote the first motion? First motion? Come yeah. on. For the warrants. For the warrants. Oh. Just say all those in favor. Oh, all in favor? Oh, I'm Aye. sorry. I Aye. <laughs> no, okay. No one's opposed. Okay. All right. Now, now we'll do it. Ignore, then I'd like a motion uh, to approve uh, minutes from the ZBA minutes from November 13th, 2018. You have that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. A special town meeting will be held at 7 p.m. Tuesday, February 26th in the Banquet Hall at the Town Hall. Senator Gobi's aide, Lucas McDermott, I'm probably saying his name wrong, will hold office hours in the Town Hall from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Wednesday, February 6th. All are welcome. A reminder that a winter parking ban is in effect from November 15th to April 1st for all public ways in the town during the hours of 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. No parking on the streets, whether or not snow is predicted, and anyone in violation will receive a citation of $25 for the first offense. Does anyone else have anything to say? Uh, an announcement? Looks like we've got an announcement. You have an announcement? I have a question. <coughs> Special town meeting at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, the 26th. What is the purpose? Uh, we'll, we're, we'll talk about that when we, we open the warrant, because that's the first thing on the agenda. So, first thing on our agenda is to open the special town meeting warrant. Okay. The second, the, uh, we will open the warrant tonight, and it will be closed at 3 p.m. on January 31st, and we are only going to be putting only administrative articles on it. There will be no money articles at all. Yeah. Okay. Well, we had the um, the water department had come to us, and they were um, the, a couple of their candidates that they're hiring are uh, that they want to hire. They're two applicants for the position, and um, they're quite qualified for the position. So they want we want to be able to, they wanted to be able to exceed the benefits that you know were set forth in the personal bylaw personnel bylaw. So that is uh, the reason why we're doing it. And it'll just be a new section. I don't know if anyone else would like to explain more. Well, it's just skilled positions yeah. are difficult to yeah, fill. Yeah. And when you when you have qualified candidates and there's pushback as far as benefits, mm -hmm. we need to really understand what, what we can do and what we can't do. And right now it's very <coughs> limited as to what we have flexibility yeah. of doing. So it's specific to the water department. Yes. Yes. Sort of like yeah. Open close. Yeah. That's open and close. Right? And then if anybody, if anyone else has anything administrative that they want to do, they can do that. But it doesn't have no no money articles will be on that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Done. So uh, that will affect our budget, correct? That would not. No, I don't. No, that's not going to affect the budget. No, because the because water department. Is yeah, they, the water department is they're pretty much self sustaining. But, but we're offering. Uh, Benefits comes out of their own budget. Correct. Yeah. So it doesn't really affect us. Don Don had his hand up. If he'd like to add to it. So it, it's to give us some flexibility in what we can offer to the higher supervisor. Okay. And, and the water department is so sustaining, so it does not come out of the town budget whatsoever. So that. <clears throat> that could go across all the parties, though. In 
Mm. Yeah. The, the uh, article is specific yeah. to the Water Department to give yeah. the flexibility to the Water Department. Yeah, it's just, what can There's a copy of the article. I have a copy of the article in here. If you'd like me to read the whole thing. Not necessarily, I'll just take a copy of the article. Okay, after the meeting, we'll give you a copy. Okay, so that's it. So we, we, we're, yes, John? Uh, the question about the personnel bylaw is that something that also may be brought up uh, in the uh, meeting. Uh, well, what we're going to do, what we're going to renumber this new section. It will be called chap Section 12 of Chapter F uh, 15 being numbered accordingly. So this would be a new, this would be a new chapter that we're putting in, in the section that we're putting into the personnel bylaws. Rather than removing it from the... Well, we're still, we're still trying to get some answers from town council on that, from removing it from the general bylaws and just having it like a, a personnel handbook. And then um, town council had also, because I, I attended the MMA conference this weekend and I talked to town council and she said that we have to have a vote at town meeting to take it out. And then she said also that um, the select, we can vote to have the selectmen be the only ones that have to approve what goes into that book. It doesn't have to go before town meeting. Okay. Um, also, is there any um, article that may be addressed uh, on the bridge construction? Yeah. I'm working on that right yeah. now, and I know that um, I'm working with one from the state. She said she hopes to get everything to me in time to be able to put it on the special town meeting warrant. If not, then it'll have to be the annual, but we are shooting for the special. Right, and, okay. yeah. and worst case scenario for um, a project like that one, there is an alternate method other than town meeting because all of the property is state or town owned. Um, where we, we might be able to do an in-house committee that certifies that that uh, we're providing that temporary right away. Because that, if, if, if all that paperwork can get squared away with Brian's yep. uh, annual town meeting, it might uh, expedite. The Absolutely, anything that yeah. we could we could pull forward like that—that's something that's 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 a, a, a zero impact administrative thing. So, so like. Um, Linda and Karen were saying mm -hmm. we've got the we've got it with town you know between kind of town council and the state right now trying to see if we can get the verbiage to put onto the warrant in time for this special town meeting if we can't we may have an alternative route to to providing approval for it that doesn't require a town meeting that's fully legal under mass general law because it is a special case where there's there's no uh, private eminent domain uh, and then worst case scenario we'll do it at the end. Good. Okay. And last, one last oh, one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the town bylaws require that any new town hire em employee uh, have a uh, pre employment physical. Mm -hmm. uh, would, I don't think every employee necessarily needs to have a full physical. I do believe fire, EMT, police. Hi. Highway. Uh, highway and probably the water yes. superintendent mm -hmm. should have a physical. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's driving a vehicle yeah. um, and doing manual labor. Mm -hmm. uh, I would ask that maybe that bylaw be changed to not all employees, but those that require physical. Uh, now I, does that need to be so, run by the well, bylaw so, committee? Yes. Well, that is. Is that in the personal bylaws it, it, or the so, regular bylaws? So I think it, I'm not certain actually. I'm I, would not certain. I would have to double check. The other piece of it is yeah. that if we ever move to say, you know, mandatory or even random um, substance yeah. testing, that would be considered a pre-employment physical and that mm -hmm. would apply across the board potentially. It's supposed so, to apply. I think that's how it is written now. It's supposed to apply to everyone. But right. I'm sure the people aren't doing it, but like, and then your question, when you talked to Karen and you called me this afternoon, you wanted to know if we had a town doctor. And I think years ago, like I said, it used to be Dr. Chua, but he he's yeah. no longer so, in practice. So like I said, probably just go to their regular physician. So we don't. Uh, no, we don't. No. Uh, I did get a copy of the uh, state 
pre-employment physical mm -hmm. requirement that the yep. police department uses. Yep. And I would like to use that okay. as the format mm -hmm. and uh, to whatever doctor um, you know is willing to do do the physical. Yeah, like I said, probably they could go to their primary primary well, care and have we, it done. We wouldn't want them to use their own doctor. So Karen, what We'll get you a list of a couple of different um, occupational health folks because that's probably the right place to go is somebody that deals in, in employment physicals. We wouldn't want them to go to their own physician for fear of that existing relationship um, biasing the results, I would think. That was my thought as well. Yeah. So. Great. All right. That's you. Is this one person, one application? What? Well, no. It would just be the it would just be the person that is hired that would go have their physical done. So how many applications do you have? We had three. Okay. So one just was for physical therapy. Yeah. Three applications. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Any more questions on that? Okay, we'll move on to number two. It's a request to deficit spend uh, snow and ice. And uh, Herb recommends that we overspend it by $50,000. And I'd like to have a motion to do that. Motion to that effect. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this? Um, advisory, uh, I replied to this earlier. Uh, we approved seventy-five thousand dollars in the two thousand and nineteen budget. Uh, we've had two snow instances, and what I would advise we would recommend to the board selectmen to request a you know, some sort of itemization of, of what has been spent so far. It seems, you know, I, I'm doubtful that seventy-five thousand has been spent so far. And if so, on what? No, I kind of agree. I agree with you, Steve. We should have we should have some kind of a listing of what <coughs> the money has been spent on and why they why they're requesting another fifty thousand. Do you have any reason, answers for this? No, yeah. no they didn't have the spreadsheet attached. No, that's the. No, this is the no, only thing just, she sent. This is well, did, you, did you get a spreadsheet attached with yours? I was going to say maybe no. my emails no. screwed up. No, this is no. This is no, all please. we got. No, I'm just used to whenever they send this the came, request. This came. In, this came in. This came in this morning. I put in a call to. Mr. Bobby Barnes, and I have yet to hear a reply from him. I'm sure he will have information. But it's, you know, we're not necessarily a, a, a uh, you know, uh, somebody who's going to audit, shall we say. No, I, well, no, and actually, this. That's why we're the, recommending to the board. No, standard, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even look at the email because I'm so used to the attachment being there when Cindy sends the request up. Because she does well, track there those wasn't any in the house. Okay. The first time they sent it, they just wanted um, permission to a uh, deficit spend. So I wrote back and said, Cindy, by the way, I need a figure. I'm going to have to give them a figure tonight. And then she came back with 50000 Okay, so we just attached, get right? it. If we could have a yeah, co so copy of what we spent to yes, date. That's yeah. what we want, a copy of what we spent to date. Yep. I'm sorry. And, and on what? And on what, what they yes. spent it on. I just wanted to make sure I understood that it's in addition to the 75. Yes, that's it. Yeah, that's addition to the 70, 75. And we run about that each year anyway. Yeah, every year we go through this with the deficit spending. Yeah, yeah there's, there's been. Yeah. That's not, it's, we've had two snowstorms. So do we want to hold on? I think they had to actually, no. there was precipitation two other days sure. that they had to uh, solve. Other, other things, I get it, but. Yeah. You know. Right. No. What, what we don't want to do is walk out of here tonight because we've been asked by the highway department to deficit spend to make sure we're covered. We're covered. Yeah. And that what yeah. we need to do is get a document yeah. in here that says this is what we've done to date, a couple snowstorms and whatever it's cost. And what we don't want to do is be in a situation where we have a freezing rain situation yeah. on Thursday and have an issue. And that's what we're, ex not, we're no. expecting rain on Thursday and with the freeze today, I so, would say let's not yeah. question, let's just okay. get the documents and move on from there. So, so, so when, when's your next meeting? The 7th. Okay. Um, and our next meeting is what, the 5th? The 5th. <coughs> so 
I think we could amend the motion to include coverage of deficit spending through the 5th of February, not some non-specific until um, and request to the highway department send us the documentation related to the expenditures thus far. So you don't want to approve this tonight? No, no I want to approve deficit so, spending yes. through our next meeting. So it's a time certain versus a dollar certain. Mm -hmm. um, but with the with a specific instruction to highway department to, to send us the oh, yes. send us and, what, the, and the advisory the details yes. related to this. I agreed to that or we agreed to that already, I thought with Steve. Right. I'm just including it in the motion. Okay. Or I'm trying to amend the motion. Okay. Amend for <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Not a problem. No problem. Is there a second for the amendment? Sure. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we then we should uh, I'll meet the re then we we should uh, again, once again, a motion to recommend. He's recommending fifty thousand for his deficit spending for the snow and ice. Right, but we just voted it as a time. No, but I thought we were just voting the amendment that you oh, made. Oh, that's true. That is the amendment. That was right. the amendment. Right for the uh, for the fifth. Okay. All in yeah. favor of the fifty thousand? Oh, I'm, I'm in favor. It's yeah. a, we're not going to spend it unless we need yeah. it, and if we need okay. it, we need it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll say no until I see the numbers. Okay, I'll, I'm in favor, so I'll motion passes. Motion passed. Okay, our next one is okay. The next one is if we'll have um, Jeff and Ian come up for our discussion on South Pond. Well, well, to start now. this off, I, re I remember the last time we spoke to the two of you, I think that the Recreation Committee was kind of backing off from South Pond. Has anything changed since then? Uh, it's become more formal. Um, we had a discussion at our last meeting that we would like to uh, surrender our budgetary money, and we believe it needs to move out of the uh, Rex realm. Um, okay. I think you can correct me here if I'm wrong, but the feeling of the committee is that it's becoming more of a conservation issue than it is a rec issue. Um, we've struggled with engagement in repairs that are necessary there. Um, at this point, you know, if it wasn't for, for Don and, and the Lake Association kind of looking after some of the things, but they can't look after the fact that uh, there's not any handicap accessibility, but quite honestly, it's so dangerous, it's almost dangerous for foot traffic as well. Um, <coughs> Ian had coordinated a cleanup this summer, got a group of folks down there where we were allowed to, after 12 years of myself on the committee, get a piece of power equipment down there to, um, to clean up. And um, we had conversations about adding sand and other things but I would say the next day we had a fairly substantial rainstorm and due to what's happening down there it basically eroded the, the hillside and eroded the beach um, you know we've had ongoing issues with um, folks littering and the policing of it uh, again the lake association has yeah. more courage mm -hmm. than I'm willing to put forward to go down and confront people uh, about uh, alcohol on the beach, charcoal grills on the beach. Uh, the, the trash situation is, quite honestly, it's disturbing. Um, we don't have a signed agreement, I don't think. At this point. No, we currently do not. No, we don't. Ian, Ian's done a lot of legwork in that regard as well. It's come, we've come to the conclusion that it belongs outside of the scope of rec. All, the only way it fits into rec is that people are swimming. Well, and then the other piece to that, Jeff, is that th those that you're ser we are servicing on that beach are not necessarily Brookfield residents. In fact, probably, as I've seen, it's mostly out of town yeah. rather yeah. than in town. So if you tie that with the idea that the agreement is not up to date, it's a one-year lag, 
and so it needs to be done. What uh, what we really need to do is go back to uh, fish and uh, wildlife, wildlife and, and fish, and decide what they want to do with that beach because they really own it. We don't really own it. We've had, and, and determine what to do because there needs to be grant monies or whatever to improve the situation down there. Those monies could come from the town if the town felt like it wanted to do those expenditures, but it really boils down to the state coming up with money. This is the same state organization that we've been working with or trying to work with on Rice Corner where they've refused us any kind of correspondence, I understand, uh, where uh, we have a $30,000 repair and they don't want to pony up anything for something that's coming off their land. So it's probably time that we have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation yeah. with uh, wildlife and decide what our relationship wants to be on the beach. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. Uh, Karen was telling me today, Don, were you trying to QQLA? Were you trying to negotiate a new agreement with them? Remember when you gave us a list, which I happened to have in the South Pond folder? I believe it was from QQLA. Oh, I wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, I wasn't negotiating no. anything. Oh, you weren't. Okay. Just making points of what oh, okay. I needed to be looked at right. in, the, in the future agreement. Okay. I have not. Oh, no, because we. No, no, he didn't negotiate. He, he just gave us the list basically. Oh, that's so what it was. It was just the list. That right, because we were signed up for a lot of things that we weren't doing as well. I mean, yeah. there was some real problems with the agreement, the, the way it was framed up. Mm -hmm. Well, the rules and regulations that wildlife give us contradict some of the things that were in the agreement mm -hmm. from yeah. the state. Yeah. So that was one problem. And then the other problem was, you know, we would come to the town. And they would say go to the state. We would, you know what I mean? It, it's always yes. that back and forth because the state's mm -hmm. like, oh, that's the town. Town versus, yeah. And yeah. It, it was just running in circles trying to get anything yeah. done. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at the amount of money that would have to go into the beach just to make it up to code and allow people to use it safely and yeah, keep it look, clean and all that. At least $60,000. Oh, yeah, that's exactly the number I was estimating, mm -hmm. too. Um, I'm working on another project right now. And going off of those labor numbers, those those estimates, mm -hmm. sixty thousand easily, just to get the walks put back in and everything. Um, so then you start thinking like, all right, it's going to be years before the beach is back to where we want it to be. What's the payoff? We're still servicing like seventy percent of out of town. Mm -hmm. So use. so part of that beach is where the right of way needs to be in order to do the bridge work anyway. I think so. Isn't no. it? No. I thought it was that side of the road. Well, they were going to fix when they did that program. They were going to, the state said they were going to put a, a road from that river coming down up to the grant, the little parking area. <clears throat> but they had to deal with two other organizations, and I, you know, it just never happened. So, excuse Does, me, can, him to, to can you speak up for the mic? Could you speak speak up a little bit because uh, Sharon's having some problems hearing. Either that or pull your chair up to the table, would you? Okay. It's amazing to see Linda and Clarence were on the nice corner road with me and Herbie when we argued. We did actually almost argue with Miller Street to take possession. They will take possession of theirs. Well, the state, the fellow was there before. Uh, and they said, oh, we're, we're gonna, the old timers have been complaining that their boats, they can't turn inside of that little parking lot. They were going to make a road. Well, that didn't happen. They brought sand in and they just spread it out. Never did anything. Uh, fishing game, fielded stream, and uh, wildlife just, it's just, you know, when you call up, you get nothing. Uh, well, you, you, got two or, you got two competing organizations within the state. Yeah. You have wildlife that cares about the birds and yeah. the a lot of our land in town, oh, yeah. and you have the Department of Conservation that's really the park organization. The beach is owned yeah. by the wildlife folks that aren't into parks and recreation and access and all those kinds of things. So I think that the, the idea of going back and having an agreement or f trying to form an agreement with them for whatever is going to happen is really one that really starts to say, wildlife, you own it. What are you going to do about it? If you're going to do something about it, great. If you're not going to do something about it, would you then transfer it to, to the con DCR. Department of DCR mm -hmm. component such that we can, in fact, deal with people that are 
into beaches and access and all those kinds of things. And then coming away from that, you can then decide whether or not the town has an interest or not. But, but again, I think you have to step up one. So what I would do is recommend that we solicit the new uh, Bill Davis and, and set up a meeting where he comes to town and we have QQA. Rec, if you guys can help us because of your knowledge of the site, Ken, for your knowledge of the site, mm -hmm. so that we could sit down and meet with him and, or his representatives to decide what we're going to do. That's a good idea. I feel, I feel the same way as you do. We need to sit down and see what we're going to do with the beach. So who's going to call the replacement for Bill Davis? Okay, great. Great. Thanks, Karen. All right, I could even if Karen's too busy, I mean, I could even put the. Well, let's see what the what date what date he's available and based on when he's available. Let's see how many of us can be be with him. Because I think it really has to start. There is no agreement in place. No, the contract's up. Four months or five months yeah. to get it, something in place for this summer. Where I'm kind of parked is that we've tried trash issues, we, we, lots of hard work to keep it picked up. We have the porta potty and, and, and the requirements for that, and it's like who's going to own it? If we don't have the bandwidth money, is not interested anymore, and I can understand given what they've with it. Okay, and I, I see. Ken shaking his head, no, it's not conservation committee. Can we at least touch base with either some of the folks on open space or open it up to like see if there's interest in just like we have a town hall committee, at least have like maybe like a beach steering committee throw it out there to, that if people feel strongly that they want to have this in town, then let's let's have some folks that want to be focused just on that. And and it's just like almost hey, to put this way, in, in some ways. At least for this stage of it, it would be almost like the police station committee. It's it's not necessarily going to be forever, but from a standpoint of just steering what path the town is going to take with regards to it, um, it if we have any volunteers yeah. out there, I think it would be good. And to it's really a shame to just let it let it, let it go because you know years ago there used to be you know, people would go over. There were you know all Brookfield residents and people used to have to come to the town hall and buy um, a sticker to put on their car saying that they were Brookfield residents, and that's the only ones that could go in, go there. Right. Right. And then the Jepsons turned it over to the state. And the, the Jepsons turned it over to the state because it used to be called Jepsons Beach because the, the Jepsons owned it years ago. Yeah. Right. So what we can do is, to best point, is the Open Space and Rec Committee mm -hmm. next meeting of that yep. organization is February 13th. We had great representation at the kickoff meeting where we had constituents for, from all the constituencies that are kind of more or less represented. And what I would say is if there's a beach representative or th those folks that feel strongly about the beach, that they should in fact come and visit us on February 13th at 6.30 in this yeah. room to see what we want to go and how Don, we want to go. Don? I agree with everything that's been said. I mean, it needs attention. Yes, it's a lot of money. Uh, we already know from the ADA uh, report that there's some deficiencies there that need to be addressed. Um, again, a lot of money. It, it's going to take a concentrated effort to move to that. And, and I think the agreement is the right way to do it. And the one other possible thing that uh, I had brought up previously, and that was uh, making it a town beach, but where it's yeah. owned by the state, that can't happen. I question whether we could transfer that out of fish and wildlife back to the town. And they, I know they said it was it would have to be paid face value for that property. But you might want to ask Herb if he has any interest in maintaining that town-owned parking lot across the street. Maybe you could swap mm -hmm. that parking lot yeah. for the beach. Then it becomes town property. It could become a town. Um, Beach and residents only, so we get back to where it was. Yeah, get back to how it was. I don't know if that's possible. It was just a suggestion. We got to get in the room yeah. and hammer it out. Yeah, we've yeah. got to we've got to get together and decide what's going to happen, yeah. and we've got to see if we can get a representative from the state out here. And you know, the Lake so Association is willing to work with anybody on yeah. uh, you know 
what? the best direction. Do we want to ask uh, Al Jones to, at least from an assessor perspective, take a look at the valuation of the town parcel that's on that, that stretch of road vis-a-vis -vis the, the, at least in square footage, the, the beach itself? And, um, I, I see, think the first, at least the get first the person to ask would be her. Since it's, since it's mm. uh, you know the highway yeah. plows it and maintains mm. it maybe maybe they would like it for some reason maybe they don't want it i don't right. know yeah we should probably discuss that with her first yeah. before we go we're finding out value yeah. okay okay Thanks. all right don thank you if they could happen in parallel hmm? oh yeah exactly it, it one doesn't stop the other no we, we force the meeting yeah and it, between now and the time that we get to sit down with these folks decide whether or not there's some flexibility with the property you know, as we're discussing this um, of immediate well I guess it's not immediate unless you're ice skating but concern is there are uh, there's at least one major pine that is totally rotted at the bottom um, that really needs attention sooner than later um, do you know if it's on the list I so I oh, say no. there's a huge list. Well, yeah. okay. It may not be a priority considering where it is in the time of year that it is. Um, but, but there's a pine at the beach. Yeah, and it's it, it's substantially rotted. Okay. Um, a few of those trees probably, if they were looked at, would be on the list today. Theoretically on the list. Um, it, but it comes, I think that issue of that tree speaks full circle yeah to the bigger picture issue that we just discussed, which is state, town, who's paying for who's it, paying who's for doing it. the work. And it's the battle that we have fought for a dozen years at least. Uh, for me, 12 years. And so we don't have okay. an agreement. So anything moving forward needs an agreement. Yeah. But I, I, I would hate to see it at the risk of somebody getting hurt yeah. because, sure. you know, because, right? So. Yeah. There's the there's the balance there. Um, just bring it to your attention. Make sure see if it's on the list or whatever. You know, just so sure. Yeah, just so we understand, Jeff. Mm -hmm. We fund basically 90 trees a year to be removed. Sure. And we're probably at 200 and something on that okay. list. And yeah, I'm sure you have to prioritize prioritize right. And I, I, I completely understand that, but. Yep. Whether it's going to the state and saying, hey, or however that has worked. I'm okay. I'll follow up. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, seriously. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, well, I just want to just, I want to circle back around budgetarily. Mm -hmm. When we submit our budget request for next year, we will be removing the line item for South Point Beach on that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Historically, maybe, you can correct me, Don, maybe four years ago, I think the Beach Association started paying for the port of Puff maybe four years ago. Prior to that, the entire budget was for summertime waste removal. Um, the, the Lake Association graciously took that over, and we used it. We last year, Somebody's in charge. Our pile will be in somebody else's. What, whatever happened to the lifeguard chair that was down there? Uh, I think I think it was, memory serves, there was two incarnations ago, mm -hmm. town hall, yeah. I believe it was down downstairs along with um, some uh, like, literally like lifesaver looking, mm -hmm. like old okay. technology. Yeah. I believe it was all, yeah. all so trashed. Yeah, um, I believe the requirement calls for having a lifeguard. It's a lifeguard or, or posting that there is no lifeguard. So I think, yeah. Um, it, it, it was, it's great. It, it's definitely great. And so how it's been interpreted in the 12 years I've been there and the signage that's there's no lifeguard on duty. Swim at your own risk. In, in fact, there was a phone down there that apparently at one point somehow connected to, <laughs> to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of... And then, um, if 
you know, we don't come to any agreements on who's going to take care of the beach, then we won't be able to have the Red Cross swimming lessons in, that's done by um, the camp, Y Camp in Southbridge. Because they usually go down there, what is it, sometime in July? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they request a, a two week yeah. window. So, I mean, if we, <clears throat> so if we don't come to any agreement, you know, who's going to take care of the beach, then I don't know if we'll be able to have an agreement to have them down there or not. Well, that I well, we don't no. we don't have authority to have no. an agreement with them yeah. because the agreement doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Nope. I think that's that's four steps out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so but we, we but you know in the in the discussions with um, Fish and Wildlife and DCR, we might want to at least like communicate to the Y that the state of the beach is uncertain for next year, mm -hmm. so that one they can either look for an alternate location, or two they can weigh in. Right, so because they do provide services to some of the kids in town oh, through yeah. the swimming lessons. It's open. I think it, it is open just to the, the children here in town. That's not true. It's, no, oh, it's, it's not. not. It's it used to be. The swimming, lessons, the swimming lessons are provided by the Y in Southbridge at a reduced rate for Y members oh. and an elevated rate for residents. Oh, so it's changed because it used to just be for Brookfield residents. It is not. It is oh. not. It's predominantly, it's predominantly non Brookfield. Oh, okay. I yeah. didn't realize. If we that. go down and see who the bad actors are, it's primarily out of town. Well, I'd like to comment on that. We have to hesitate that it's all out of town people who are yeah. causing problems there. I think it that um, people litter, and I yeah. think that it's, oh. it's oh, sure. unreasonable to suggest that it's, um, it's all big. people from out of town. Yeah. I think there's a, a mixture, yeah. and it's. Um, I mean, it's I mean, my opinion that it's easy to blame I'm, somebody from out of town. Right, because I mean, we, you've had trash issues even at Lewis Field, which, yeah, there's kids from other towns, but at the same time, that's a 50 50 split, generally speaking. So it's not necessarily yeah. just that it's not residents or that there's no ownership, because unfortunately, there's a lot of lack of ownership in common spaces, I guess. To, but, to that's, but that being said, it, it, it seems reasonable to me that it would mm -hmm. become a, a, a town beach again, and I wasn't aware that at one point. There was, was a sticker program. Yeah. yeah. Which, oh, that was which is how it was when I grew up in Spencer. Yeah. That's how it was. And, it was. And that's, that becomes more enforceable, mm -hmm. you know, with the police. And, yes. And, they, and, you know, and they can only do so much. I mean, they can't live down there, right? It's, no, they can't. They drive through, and, but that would make it yeah. that much more yeah. enforceable. So, mm -hmm. that's a, that's so it's a lot of different things to think about when right, we get yeah. together. So okay. Just let us know when we need to. Sure. Okay. Well, thank we'll, the, I thank the two of you for coming in. Sharon, yes. Okay, we're going to call a brief recess of what, how long is it going to take you? Two or three minutes? Great, thank you. Okay, we're resuming the meeting, gentlemen. Can we call a meeting to order again, please? Our next thing is an appointment. We have an appointment here. It comes from uh, the advisory board. They would like to have Krista Lebrun. Lebrun? Is that how you say her name? Yep. Uh, to be appointed to the um, advisory board uh, at their meeting that was held on Tuesday, January 22nd. And she will be a, a member until June 30th, 2019. I'd like okay. to have a motion made for that. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Quick, quick, quick discussion. No, um, quick discussion. Which, which slot is she filling? Who was previously in that seat, and how many does that put you at? Okay. Curtis okay. Sloan was. So in other words, we have a nine-person board. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> We're at seven. This would be eight. Okay. okay. And um, and if I were to select a person who was not there, it would be Curtis. He, he, he stepped down as the chair. So. Okay. Yeah. Right, so we just need to understand because we need to align her appointment period with um, Curtis's. And I'm not certain if no, that was. No, when, no, when there is an appointment like this oh, during that's right. the year, it's only until June 30th, okay. then, then the selectman reappoint mm -hmm. her so again. Said, she has to put into if she wants to be reappointed again. Yeah, that's right. Um, is there uh, any uh, other discussion on that? Okay. 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 So you've got one additional slot yet. Okay. Yeah, and not. You know, we're, we're everyone sort of got their intent up. Okay, fair know, enough. But it's it's she she came to our attention during the uh, town meeting, 
Right. Price Corner Road, great presentation. Uh, spoke to her. She's got some experience with uh, Holland, with uh, Cable Commission. She's a teacher. Great. She's a teacher, you know. Awesome. It's all great stuff. So, yeah. I think it was an I signed, be, I signed before uh, voting, though. Just, uh, <laughs> and then the uh, Cable Commission meeting. Yeah, I think it is mostly because it's at the House Mass. Oh, okay. There is one other thing that I was going to bring up whenever it's appropriate. Oh, can we take a vote? Yes, motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, our next one is to pay the BETA invoice from the 2017 Community Development Block Grant for the Mill Street site. Motion to pay. Second. <coughs> All in favor. Any discussion over this? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Got a pair of bills. <laughs> and they did actually deliver the services that were contracting, so I guess that's... Time to pay the bill. Time to pay the bill. It's up the bottom. It's eight B six. Where is it on the next page? It's, it's on the next page. It's fifteen thousand nine ninety-four dollars. Out of a block grant. That, that, that block was a block grant. grant. Not out of town money. No, it's not town money. Curious about what it was for as well? No. No, it was the, cl it was the cleanup. Yep. Cleanup down there at the Mill Street site. Yep. Okay. Our next one is the special use permit. And these are two. We'll take them and vote them all together. And I think this is three. Three of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then for <clears throat> one event is 7-13-2019. It, it will be at Quaybog Pond for the Mass Bath Bath Alliance. <clears throat> and then the next one will be 4-13-2019 for South Pond, and that's for the Mass Bath Alliance. And then there's another one at 6 for 6-22-2019 at Quaybog Pond, and that's the Boston Bass Anglers. And I would like um, a motion to approve these to be signed. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, okay, we have uh, now we'll go on to other and Mr. Uh, Snyder has something that he would like to tell on other this evening. So the town was notified today through mm -hmm. U.S. Mail, so that's why I was yep. sitting in, in the town hall, that uh, on December the 17th, 2018, that the uh, state of Massachusetts recognizes the Tobin Beach site as a National Register of Historical Places. So uh, we've reach one more milestone as far as its national rec recognition. That's great. So again, uh, the open space group, next hmm. meeting of open space is on the 13th of February. We encourage anybody that's interested in open space to join us. And that one of the things that wants to be an output of open mm -hmm. space is what are our priorities moving forward. 
one of my thoughts as far as a priority will be the Tobin Beach cam uh, campground to take the remaining three buildings down mm -hmm. and bring it up as pristine an area as we can have as far as park-like setting. Uh, but then we have to then decide what we need to do or do we want to go beyond that as far as that area. So. And I would like to thank Mr. Snyder for all the work that he has put into that because I think without him we wouldn't have gotten this recognition. From okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, now under correspondence, we got some more Point here. Of order, Madam I was supposed to be on the uh, agenda today. Cameron said I was about the tree. He told me if I had an issue, they would get it on the agenda, and it's not on the agenda again. <clears throat> okay. Okay, we'll bring. I I know what you're going to talk about, and okay. And I discussed it. We discussed it with Herb. He said uh, the tree up there has been like that for ten years. And he said it's not hazardous, and he has it on the list to take it down. Okay. Well, I disagree. It's very hazardous, and it's when the wind blows, it's moving. It's just a matter of time. Okay. And okay. it's very dangerous, and you're cutting all these other trees up on Town Farm Road that don't need to be cut, and, you, and the dangerous ones you're not cutting. So can we get someone up there to cut it before? There's a school bus that packs right there, and there's also tenants there, and there's also other people that stop and wait for their children. And you have this dangerous, dangerous tree limb. All you got to do is take the limb off. You don't have to cut the tree now. Mm -hmm. I talked to the owners, and they said it's definitely a town tree. Now, Cameron said that, Herb said it wasn't a town tree, but it is a town tree. But then Herb went, then we, Herb he, went he, down, he down, and he looked in, that he realized the one that you were talking about is, is a town yeah. tree. Yes, they're all town he trees. Said, too he there. said it's been the same way as it is now for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And well, just it like is I on stated. The list. It's, it's just that it's not going to probably get done right away because. There's a lot of other trees that are ahead of that. More than that, you can see right into half halfway I through don't the know. tree. He said it wasn't hazardous. He said it wasn't hazardous because I've I've spoke to him about this okay, personally. Okay, so you're all on notice. If something does happen, the town will be liable. If the children or the bus gets crushed, just so you we're all we're on the same page here. Well, why why is the, is it a, why is the bus parked up there? Shouldn't it be at a bus there, garage? Right there in the corner. They let the children off right there. Trees right, two trees up. Yes, but the way you stated it, that the bus was left there all the well, time. Well, they stopped for the they stopped for the children. Oh, when they there. stopped, picked yeah. the kids up for school. So, okay, all so right. Just as long as you know that. Yeah, we're aware. All right, thanks. All right, thank you. Okay, our next, uh, we had correspondence once again from Chatta. Uh, they're happy to report that we have reached an agreement with Tribute Broadcasting to provide. WGN America and multiple local stations ABC, CBS, Fox, and CW, and digital multicast channel affiliates to our customers. Uh, and this is from Melinda Kinney, and she can be reached at 207 253 2217 if anybody has any questions. And then our next thing is this is from the Quaybog Hills Chamber of Commerce. And it says, each year the Quaybog Hills Chamber of Commerce salutes individuals, businesses, and organizations in the Quaybog Hill area who have contributed to the betterment of our community. This year we are pleased to present a Public Safety Person of the Year Award. The Quaybog Hills Chamber Board of Directors realized that local heroes should be recognized on a regional level. And we are proud to begin this process and are seeking nominations to help this happen. The award will recognize one police officer, fireman, or EMT who has been employed by one of the 15 Quaybog Region towns. The winner will be selected from nominations submitted by police and fire chiefs in these towns. We ask that you nominate an employee who has demonstrated actions above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, please note that nominations should be based upon individuals' response to critical situations or outstanding performance. The deadline for the submission is Friday, March 1st, and you can send it to the Quaybog Hills Chamber of Commerce, 3 Converse Street, Suite 103, Palmer, Mass, 01569, or you can call the Chamber's office at 413-283. 2418 and this came from Patty Clark who is the director of members membership services okay. Madam Chair point of order I believe Mr. Gillis had stated he had some town business to discuss 
Mr. Gillis, you had some town business? Yes, I do. The, uh, the town accountant has sent out all the budgets to all the departments, mm -hmm. so that's good news. Yep. Thank you very much for following up on that. Um, <coughs> I requested with most of the town departments, the key departments, to uh, schedule dates with us um, throughout the month of February and March so that we can get the process going. Okay. okay? Last time we were together, I had asked the Board of Selectmen to be the, the leader of the pack. And uh, so I'm here to ask if we could set a date like February 28th or March 7th as a first go around with your budget. This is not a set in stone budget. This is a, you know, let's, let's keep the process going. And mm -hmm. um, um, from that, with deadlines, you know, uh, uh, surprises and things are, 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 are mitigated. And now, so what days are those different dates on? Those are both those are Thursdays, the 28th. Oh. And so we, we have committed to every Thursday between now mm -hmm. and till whenever okay. to, to do our job. Uh, we're going to have a level fun night on the 21st of uh, February. Okay. And, uh, uh, with uh, with refreshments and and, uh, and, and holiday cheer, um, and um, and uh, you'll hear more about that coming up. But um, we're skipping the uh, 14th for the romantics on the committee of, of February, okay. and um, and then we're going right back into it. So February 21 is our level fun night. Okay. We're looking at maybe the 28th or the third or or, February, or excuse me March 7th or or uh, or so. Okay. I told him that typically uh, it's the chairman that meets yeah. with me. Yeah, the two of us usually. Too busy, yeah. usually just the two of yeah, the two of Karen and I, the last few years, we've, we've sat down and did the budget. That'd so be so yeah, if you'd like to have the two of us come in, or? That'd be wonderful. Yeah. That'd March 7th, because we have a special time yes. meeting on the 26th. Yeah. We're still cleaning up yeah. after that on the 28th, so we'll do the following. Yeah, how about March 7th? Okay. March 7th, great. I'll it, send you a little. Yes, yeah, send us a note to remind okay. us. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yep. Anything else from anyone tonight? Motion to adjourn no. at 8. But we're at 7 oh, but oh, no, You no, got no, something? Nope. No, we are. Um, Oops. I'd like a motion to go into executive session under number three. Oops. To discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of, of the public body and the chair so declares. A motion to that effect. Second. Lincoln I. Snyder I. Coughlin I. And then after that we will adjourn from executive and then we will go back into the regular session to adjourn after that. Yep.